So the first step towards learning Ansible is setting up the environment. And this environment is something that we're gonna set up using Docker and Docker Compose in specific. If you have looked at, if you remember, uh, setting up Jenkins, it's the same script, same Docker Compose file that we used earlier as well. And this also has configuration for the nodes for this tag, which includes front end, catalog, cards, and uh, there are a bunch of nodes that we have as part of the Docker Compose file, which reflect this so for catalog database and application we're going to use one node for cards we're going to use individual nodes for the cards database and the cards application this is the configuration for let's say front end there's a catalog there is cards there's also one for cards db which is a mongo database so instead of setting up or installing mongo using ansible we're going to rely on a docker image which already has uh, you know the mongo db installed and this is the same script from the host that we are running Docker on. Uh, we have already created Jenkins using the Docker Compose script here, uh, where we use Docker Compose up hyphen D Jenkins. This time, I'm just going to run Docker hyphen Compose up command without any specific machine or host name. So if I run Docker Compose up hyphen D, it is going to set up everything, including the Ansible controller. And it does that using a bunch of pre-configured Docker images. And most of these images have been configured with Ubuntu operating system. And they come with, you know, let's say Ansible pre-configured and pre-installed. They also have a user defined and some basic configurations which have been done as part of that image. I verify everything using Docker Compose PS, which shows me all these hosts, including Ansible controller, catalog, uh, front end, and there's one for carts and carts DB. So all of these machines are up and I'm gonna connect to the controller node, which also runs a utility called as code spaces on port 8000. So I pick up my IP address, go to port 8000, and that starts my code spaces environment. This is a web based ID with terminal included. So it gives you the complete environment to work with Ansible to write Ansible code if needed, and then apply it from the web interface itself. So all you need to do is click on that new terminal, you can drag and drop the terminal and make it full screen as well. And you also see the editor that welcome.md is part of the editor. So whatever you write here, will be available in these this directory called as workspace and here ansible is installed and from here you can also connect to other nodes using you know devops as a username the password is code spaces with s c o d e s p a c e s so that's the password and you can connect to any of these nodes using that name the names are defined as part of the docker compose spec I just connected to the front end. I'm going to show you connecting to another node that is carts. The username and password has been pre-configured. Username is DevOps, password is code spaces. So you can use that and verify that you are actually able to connect to all of these nodes from this Ansible controller. You could also check out the code. Now the code that we're gonna use, it's a pre-written code again, um, that's for the Ansible, you know, the Ansible scripts, which are part of this UDBC bootcamp as well. So if you look at this Ansible directory, it contains the code, uh, which you can start applying to these nodes. Now, before you start applying that, instead of using this repository, you should fork it. So that's what I'm go doing here. I'm gonna fork this repository on my account. And once I have, once I do that, I can make changes and can commit it back to this, you know, to my own repository instead of the upstream. So upstream is UDBC bootcamp. Now I have my own repository, which is what I am going to clone inside this code spaces, you know, environment. So I note down the repository URL provided here. So repository, new repository, and it starts initializing it. And I have the workspace set up with the Ansible code available here. We're gonna start looking at this code, observing this code and understanding how it works, but I'll just validate that Ansible is available as part of this control node. So if I run Ansible commands or which Ansible, it shows me that Ansible is installed at that particular path. And if I run Ansible version, it is the latest version of Ansible at the time of creating this video, which is 2.6.3. Along with that, if I just type Ansible and press a couple of tabs, it does the auto, auto completion and it shows me all 
all these commands which I can possibly use related to Ansible. We're going to use Ansible, Ansible playbook and possibly Ansible config in later part of this series.